After clearing a critical hurdle on Friday, the pieces of the $95 billion package were expected to pass in a series of votes, putting the legislation on track for enactment after a tortured journey through Congress. The House on Saturday was heading toward passage of a $95 billion foreign aid package for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. As Speaker Mike Johnson put his job on the line to advance the long-stalled legislation in defiance against hardliners from his own party, lawmakers were expected on Saturday afternoon to vote separately on aid for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, as well as on another bill that includes a measure that could result in a nationwide ban of TikTok and new sanctions on Iran. The fourth bill was meant to sweeten the deal for conservatives. Mr. Johnson structured the measures, which will be melded together into one after each piece is approved, to capture different coalitions of support without allowing opposition to any one element to sink the whole deal. Each of the aid bills for the three nations is expected to pass overwhelmingly, and the Senate is expected to take it up quickly and send the legislation to President Biden's desk, capping its tortured path to enactment. The legislation includes $60 billion for Kiev, $26 billion for Israel and humanitarian aid for civilians in conflict zones, including Gaza, and $8 billion for the Indo-Pacific. It would direct the president to seek repayment from the Ukrainian government of $10 billion in economic assistance, a stipulation supported by former President Donald J. Trump, who has pushed for any aid to Ukraine to be in the form of a loan. But the legislation also would allow the president to forgive those loans starting in 2026. The scene that is expected to play out on the House floor on Saturday will reflect both the broad bipartisan support in Congress for continuing to help the Ukrainian military beat back Russian forces, and the extraordinary political risk taken by Mr. Johnson to defy the anti-interventionist wing of his party who had blocked the measure for months. In the end, the Speaker, himself an ultra-conservative who had previously voted against funding Ukraine's war effort, circumvented his right flank and was relying on Democrats to push the measure through. For months, it was uncertain whether Congress would approve another round of funding for Ukraine. Even as the momentum of the war in Ukraine shifted in Russia's favor, Republicans dug in against another aid package for Kiev unless President Biden agreed to stringent anti-immigration measures and then refused to take up legislation that paired the aid with stiffer border enforcement provisions. The Speaker of the House deserves genuine credit not only for committing to put Ukraine aid up for a vote in the House, but for breaking through all sorts of unwritten rules about pairing with the minority party on procedural votes to get there. The move doesn't just put Johnson's job in jeopardy, either now or down the line. It will forever tarnish his name and reputation among the MAGA right. It's not merely that he's putting the bill on the floor and not through some sneaky, backdoor way, like quietly blessing a discharge petition, but that he's actively making the case for the historic purpose of this moment. The Donald Trump trial in New York began Monday with a Lil Voidier action, as jurors were seated at a reasonably fast clip. Nevertheless, the tedium of jury selection and pre-trial motions can be an exhausting affair for defendants whose ruined brains require round-the-clock visceral stimulation. And so the New York Times reported on the first day that Trump appeared to nod off a few times, his mouth going slack and his head drooping onto his chest, and that the former president's lawyer passed him notes for several minutes before Mr. Trump appeared to jolt awake and notice them. We wouldn't be surprised if it was Trump's lawyers who were slipping tranquilizers into his Diet Cokes. Trump is repeatedly walking right up to, and arguably past, the line of his gag order to not trash participants in the trial. The prosecutors in the case are now arguing that he did cross it, a question that will be heard formally in the court next week.